Hello, and welcome to the hands-on deep learning with TensorFlow coding sessions. Unlike the deep learning crash course series that I produced last semester, this series will only focus on coding. I wanted to keep the concepts and the code separate because the trends in coding, deep learning frameworks in particular, change more rapidly than the core concepts. For example, I used to use Cafe three years ago, which was probably the most popular deep learning framework back then. And now I primarily use TensorFlow, and two years from now, maybe we'll all be using something else. PyTorch, for example, seems promising, but TensorFlow is more mature and has a larger community at the moment. So if somebody who wants to build deep learning models asked me where to start, I would still recommend TensorFlow. All right, let's get started with TensorFlow then. If you haven't installed TensorFlow yet, you can easily do so by using the Python package installer. You can find the instructions on their official website. I'll put the links in the description below. Installing TensorFlow can be as easy as a single line of code, such as pip install TensorFlow GPU for the GPU enabled version, or for the CPU only version, pip install TensorFlow. This is not the best way to install the CPU only version, but it's probably the easiest one. I'm using Visual Studio Code as my editor, but you can use pretty much anything you want because I'm using this as a simple text editor. I'll be writing the code here and I'll open a separate terminal and then I'll be running the code from here. Python, and what was the name of the file? Live session pi. Okay, that's where I'll be running the code. Okay, let's start with importing TensorFlow. Import TensorFlow STF. TensorFlow is usually abbreviated as TF for convenience. Let's make sure that we have installed the right version correctly by printing its version number. TF version. All right, let's run this code to see. Here we have it, 1.8. Your version might be different though. This is the version I have installed here. You'll probably have a newer version. You'll see something like 1.10 or something. Okay, let's write our first TensorFlow program, which will compute the geometric mean of two numbers, X and Y. Let's start with defining the inputs. I'll use placeholders to define the inputs. TF placeholder. What these placeholders do is that they tell the program that we'll feed these values later. So for X, I'll create a floating point placeholder. Then I'll copy this and create another placeholder named Y. So these are going to be our inputs and we're going to find the geometric mean of these. Now let's define the graph. The geometric mean of two numbers is the square root of x times y. Now we can run this graph in a session. You might wonder why we're doing this. Why don't we just run it wherever it's defined? I mean, that's how it works in PyTorch, but that's different in TensorFlow. Unless you're using the eager execution mode, operations in TensorFlow are not executed immediately. A typical TensorFlow program constructs a computational graph first, like we did here, then it creates a session to execute the operations in the graph. Now we're ready to do that with TF session as session. And now we're going to run this graph here. Session run geometric mean. We're going to use this feed dictionary to feed the values for the placeholders that we defined earlier. For x, let's say 2.0. For y, let's say 8.0. Let's print the result here. So this is going to find the geometric mean of these two numbers. Python, live session. There it is, 4.0, which is the geometric mean of 2 and 8, our placeholders, the values we fed into our placeholders. In this example, our graph had no variables. It just performed a fixed operation on the inputs that are fed by the placeholders. We can declare constants and variables to use in a graph. The main differences between these two are constants have constant values, whereas variables can change during execution. A typical example of a variable is a trainable weight in a neural network. And the other difference is that constants are stored in a graph where variables are not. So using constants increases the size of the graph and it's usually discouraged. Let's use them both in an example. First, let's create a variable scope. Variable scopes help organize variables by prepending their names to the variable names. So this name linear model will be prepended to the names of all variables that we'll define within this variable scope. They also help us define and reuse variables within this context. 
I'll create a variable w named wait using the tf get variable function. We could also use tf variable function to create a new variable, but I like this function better because this function gets an existing variable with a specific name within a variable scope or creates a new one if no such variable exists. We can define a constant to initialize this variable, such as 0.1. So we use both constants and variables in the same example. Let's define another variable named bias and initialize it to 0. And finally, let's define a graph for our very first model, a very basic linear model with a single input variable, single weight, and a single bias. We can now run inference on this graph in a session like we did earlier. We need to first initialize all variables using the global variables initializer, otherwise it'll throw an error. Then let's compute the results in a session, this session, this function will run our model given x is 2. We're going to feed this value using a feed dictionary. All right, let's print the result and run this code. There it is, 0 0.2, which is 2 times 0 0.1 plus 0, which was x times w plus c. So, so far we haven't done any training here. Normally we would want to train these variables to fit some data. And that's what we were going to be doing in the next videos. We'll see how to train these variables to fit a function to data. Alright, that's all for today. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more videos. And as always, thanks for watching, stay tuned, and see you next time.